Hello, I'm joined today by Mal Mohapatra, who is CEO of Conviva. Hello, Mal. Hi. Hi. Yeah, maybe you could just start off by telling us a little bit about Conviva. Uh, great. Uh, Conviva is a, a mobile solutions company um, with a pretty long history. We have uh, transformed ourselves time and again to stay relevant to the market. At this point of time, we have broadly four broad areas of uh, engagement or offerings from a marketplace point of view, and the largest being the digital uh, or the digital enterprise solutions. We, of course, have analytics and real-time marketing and, and uh, digital financial solutions. But today, uh, I'm here to tell you more about the digital enterprise solutions uh, that we have. Yes, of course. And as you alluded to as well, the telcos are strongly adopting a variety of digital technologies, whether it be cloud, 5G, Internet of Things, open API. I'm just wondering within that context, how are CSP requirements evolving? I think, um, you know, it'll be um, um, a, a short jab if I say I know uh, how the requirements are changing. All that I can tell you is that changing at a very rapid pace. Uh, the whole basic uh, premise on which a CSP uh, existed before and, and the way it exists today and the way it will exist tomorrow is changing at a very rapid pace. Uh, the definition of what is a communication service provider is changing, the competition profile is changing, the consumer behavior or the consumer need is changing constantly. So the telcos or the CSPs are, uh, you know, kind of transforming themselves so that they can meet the ever-changing need and the demand of the consumers. Of course, the change is driven by a multitude of factors, uh, you know, whether it is the device is one dimension, there is a huge change. Um, the, the way we are consuming content, different types of content, uh, is is uh, the other uh, huge change that's coming in. And lastly, uh, the demand that the enterprises and consumers have of the CSPs to give what they were taking years to give, now they, it, it's literally come down to, you know, months, if not weeks. Yeah, I mean, taking into account these very, very changing requirements, uh, what are, in your view, some of the key focus areas that CSPs are looking at right now? Well, one is, uh, you know, earlier when a technology was to come in, it used to have a lifespan of, uh, you know, seven, eight, ten years. Now the technologies are evolving much faster. And that's putting an additional burden or a demand. Of course, it's an opportunity for the CSPs too to integrate and offer integrated solutions at a much rapid pace. So one dimension is the need for integration. A typical BSS transformation was a matter of years, uh, you know, not, not you know, many long back. But today, uh, people are expecting things to happen in months, and, and digitization obviously gives you that opportunity, but it also offers you a little more complexity to deal with from a marketplace point of view. But the technology of API, technology of uh, cloud microservices are helping you deal with that complexity in a much easier way. Had this been done without the advent of cloud and, and microservices and APIization and other technologies that evolved today, it would have been a nightmare uh, for both the CSPs and the enterprises who are consuming the services. Mm. I think you've touched on there, but let's um, just expand a little bit. I mean, what what uh, transformations do you expect in BSS solutions themselves in the light of cloud and um, 5G? I mean, what changes will they drive? Actually, you know, it's changing pretty much end-to-end uh, -end and, and in a holistic manner. Um, Earlier, the, the systems were very closed, closed in a sense. The external world could only leverage certain aspects of a BSS system. Today, they're very open, um, so much so that the CSPs don't even know what could be the form and the shape of a usage of this tomorrow. So all that they do is they open the system up and ask all kind of 
enterprises and consumers to bring in their systems, connect to the network and leverage the way they think it is appropriate. Now that puts additional burden on the CSPs to make the system not only open, but to make it secured. Um, you know, they have to protect their network data and the consumer's data or the enterprise's data. It has to be, so, so what's called DevSecOps or security ops becomes very critical. The whole purpose of doing it cloud native is because you need auto scaling. Uh, you have to cater to demands that could be a bursty uh, based on uh, time. It could be, you know, seasonality. It could be, uh, you know, there is a massive uh, game going on in, in, at a national level. And, and you know, a few days of the tournament, that could be a different type of consumption of data or, or services from a BSS point of view. So this ability to scale up and down on a short notice couldn't have been done had cloud not been existing or not been there. And cloud is facilitated by the microservices architecture that has come in. Same is true about integration of different services, both on the enterprise side and on the CSP networks. It is only possible because of the API uh, standardization that you know there is significant investment going on where the BSS systems have to be API enabled. Plus, everybody who expects to come and integrate itself into the system has to be able to either consume the API or leverage the API that is already provided. So I think the change is not a continuous change that you're doing an incremental tweak. It is almost thinking about a new generation of solutions or platforms that has to be catered to. I mean, and that's what uh, Comiva is working on in the, in the forefront of the leading edge of these technologies. And uh, yes, thank you for that. And you have a recently launched platform, haven't you, called Blue Marble. Uh, perhaps you can tell us how that's unique in the marketplace and how it addresses key problems for CSPs. Um, um, from a uniqueness point of view, I think you'll have to see the background that we come from. We have more than a 20 year history of uh, having worked on telecom systems. So, so we know if not what to do, we at least know 20 years of richer experience of what not to do. Um, we are extremely telecom native uh, in terms of our solutions that we build today. So we know exactly how the history has been, how things have evolved, and we have taken care of systems that are built today, keeping the history of the telecom so that they're better adapted of today and tomorrow. Um, you know, whether, you know, the way the digitization has become ever pervasive, we are consuming digital services all across as, as individuals, as homes, and as enterprises, small, medium, large enterprises. So the BSS systems have to have an ability where you can very quickly. Uh, bring in the inventory of a digital service. You could create a catalog of digital services on the system. You could have payment systems integrated into the platform. <clears throat> and, and be it an enterprise or a consumer could choose a, a service of their own choice and subscribe to it, time, subscription, usage, whatever be the preference. And the CSP's ability to offer those to an enterprise or to a consumer is because of the new generation platforms like the Blue Marble that we're bringing into the marketplace. Sure, and you've touched on it a few times already, of course, cloud, microservices. How do you think those will, these two technologies, impact the wider uh, technology landscape and how CSPs engage with their customers? There is standardization all around and digital digitization has actually helped in that standardization process in an accelerated way. Uh, when I say standardization, um, you know, those were the days when the telcos or the CSPs built their own data center. Every data center looked different. Every data center, the way it operated was very different. Now cloud has brought a, a common denominator for every application vendor to look at and you have 
private or public doesn't really matter. You have a standard cloud available. And as application vendors or suppliers, we come in and port our application onto the cloud environment. What does cloud do is this portation, because of the standardization and, and digital transformations that has gone in, has squished or has kind of squeezed the time which was in, in quarters to months for bringing a service up fairly quickly. Second thing it does is, I, I think I referred to it a little bit back on auto scaling. As the demand goes up and down, rather than statically dimensioning the data center to cater to the peak load of, of traffic, now you can say that my December is heavy and my June is lighter, but something else is lighter in December and heavier in June, I can load balance and look at uh, uh, auto scaling in a, in a more, and auto scaling couldn't have been possible without uh, the, the cloud native feature. And cloud would not have been possible without leveraging microservices and applications today. The API that I'm so heavily focusing on because that's the real core to integrating multitude of services and solutions, both for enterprises and consumers, couldn't have been possible without the APIization uh, standardization that's happened. Okay, Mal, well, thank you very much for those insights. It's been great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs>